What's poppin' everyone? So most recently, I celebrated my birthday over the weekend and I just turned 30. A little bit tired right now from all the partying, but y'all are most welcome to wish me a happy birthday in the comments. It'd be much appreciated. And as a matter of fact, I am the one with the present for each and every one of you. That is a new draft league that I've joined for the release of Pokemon Home. I've picked up a brand new team for the season and I'm excited to be able to bring to you all more draft league content. This draft league is called the PPL or the Pokemon Premier League, or as I like to call it sometimes, the Pokemon Premier League, because Joey's in it. A bit different from the last league that we joined as we get to draft anywhere between 10 to 12 Pokemon, depending on how you spend your points drafting these Pokemon. And the terrestrialization rules, they are different in that you have 15 points to choose between 2 to 3 Terra Captains, and the only Pokemon that can terrestrialize must be worth 9 points and under. So it is a low to mid tier Terra League, which I find a lot cooler since it balances out a bit with the higher tier mods not being able to Terra and do some broken stuff. Now I was 7th in the draft order overall with 14 coaches total, so dead in the middle, which is not ideal since I have to wait 14 picks for it to come back to me from either side, and a lot of Pokemon get snagged during that time, so really tough to plan out what you want when you're in that position. However, by the time it came to me for the first pick, I knew exactly what I wanted to build my team around. Initially I wanted an Amorous or Sneasler as that first pick, but those got taken, so once again, apologies to my dear friend Joey PokeMMD for taking the Pokemon he wanted. 14th pick is a blessing and a curse, young man. I decided to grab Ursaluna, and this Pokemon, of course, you know, Teddy Ursa Ursaring, some of my favorite Pokemon, it's on my top 10 favorite Pokemon list, and Ursaluna is, without a doubt, one of my favorite Pokemon from Legends Arceus coming into Scarlet and Violet. That ground normal typing is so fun, and also, this Pokemon just hits extremely hard, it is very tanky, so it can survive pretty much any hit and do a lot of damage back. Not the fastest Pokemon in the world, but this Mon, I feel, is definitely worthy of a first pick. Especially since, you know, I wanted to try to theme my team around Pokemon Home stuff, so new Pokemon and things that are returning as well, and Pokemon that, of course, I've not used before. Ursaluna is one of those Pokemon, and I'm very excited to try it out. Kind of similar to Walking Wake and see what it can do in the draft setting. It's very different from the classic OU, uh, what it can do there. It can be run on Trick Room or outside of Trick Room. I think in draft, you can kind of focus on it being bulky and just hitting hard, being very tanky. And it has a ton of great coverage. Like the coverage on this thing is insane. As well as the setup options. You have Bulk Up, Swords Dance, and even Belly Drum and other stuff like that. I feel like you can kind of really tailor it to whatever matchup you have with the moves that you run and with what it can do. And there's a lot of different kinds of items that I feel this Pokemon can benefit with. I won't go into detail, but yeah, I'm definitely excited to try this Pokemon out. Really useful abilities as well in Guts, Bulletproof, and Unnerve. If a Pokemon tries to have some kind of berry, perhaps, I could run Unnerve, but I feel like most of the times I'll be running Guts or Bulletproof. Those are just really great abilities, especially if the opponent tries to status you or, and I mean, Bulletproof just blocks really useful moves, right? Like Bullet Seed and um, Focus Blast and stuff like that. Stuff that would hit this Mon super effectively. It's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, like I said, you know, really high attack stat, good HP, good defense. Spadef is not the best, but with that HP, it's just gonna be really bulky. I'm expecting also to run some Chinese AV sets at some point in time. So yeah, Ursaluna, first pick. Really happy I got to build around this Pokemon to start off our draft for this season. So 14 picks later, the draft comes back to me, and I'm trying to figure out what's the best partner for Ursaluna as the second pick. And so I'm thinking, right, Ursaluna is the kind of Pokemon that I feel if you can generate momentum to bring it in safely, it can punish anything on the field. So I immediately decided, all right, let's try to do some Volturn combination for this draft. Volturn is something that I don't think I've um, really focused on too much in draft, but I think that momentum is so cool in draft leagues, especially when your opponents are trying to switch around and they're just dancing around you as you're continuously switching and, and vol switching and U-turning and stuff like that. So I decided to pair Ursaluna with Meowskarada, which I thought was a really cool combination because the two of these Pokemon, like Ursaluna is really slow, but Meowskarada is extremely fast. And it also like punishes like those water types and other stuff like that for Ursaluna which is really cool. And yeah, I do like the momentum it has. It's really strong as well. It's one of those fast and strong Pokemon. So it kind of makes up for Sneasler because I wanted Sneasler, which was really fast and strong. And Meowskarada can also kind of have that same type of uh, role, I guess you could say. And yeah, with Protean and a ton of great coverage, it's very easy to be versatile. And versatility, of course, one of the big things I like to focus on in Draft League. Ursaluna, I think, is super versatile for what it can do. Meowskarada as well. 
And um, yeah, the combination of the two is really nice. You know, you U turn out of a Pokemon, you bring in Ursaluna, it puts in a lot of work. Really fantastic U turner, probably one of the best, I would say, for the draft league. And um, yeah, just great. Like overall, like I'm looking at its move pool and it's just fantastic. It also has spikes and hazards as well to pressure the opponent. It can do a lot of interesting, tricky things. And I do also note that it does have Trick Room. <laughs> So Trick Room Yaskarada could be kind of clean at some point in time. We'll see. I don't know. But yeah, anyways. So that was my second pick. And then I have to wait another 14 picks, of course, for it to come back. A lot of great Pokemon were taken, including one that I wanted, which was Enamorous Therian. That's one mon that I really wanted to uh, get for my team, but um, wasn't able to do that. However, I do feel like the Pokemon that I got for this third pick was... Um, a really great choice in terms of what I was looking for for the team. And my third pick is going to be Zapdos, which provides me with a really nice Volt Switch user for the team. Volturn with Meowskarada and Zapdos seems like it could be really nice. And I mean, Zapdos does lose access to Defog, unfortunately, and I think maybe like a coverage move or two. But I feel like it's a great mon, especially versus things like Great Tusk and things like that. It's really reliable as a um, bulkier flying type that is still really strong on the special side so i mean we have ursaluna and meowskarada which are both primarily physical attackers um i guess meowskarada could run special moves technically with its protean and just powering it up with certain um ways of doing so and zapdos i think is is great to kind of pair with those as it can generate momentum it has static as well so static is super useful in the sense that if you're able to like paralyze a pokemon when they try to go for u-turn or some kind of physical attack and especially if it's a mid speed tier mon you're able to potentially outrun them with Ursaluna, which is kind of crazy to think about because if Ursaluna can just get the attack off on certain mons, things get destroyed one after the other. So yeah, I do like the momentum on Zapdos. Speaking of which, Zapdos does get access to Volswitch and U-Turn, so you could run U-Turn on Zapdos too, which can bypass the ground types that try to come in on Zapdos, which will bring you into Meowskarada or Ursaluna and just destroy something. So yeah, I really do like that um, option where you can run different kinds of momentum on Zapdos, whether it be Volswitch or U-Turn or even like a Dry Baton Pass sometimes, but I don't think that's as useful as um, one of those other two moves. And yeah, just having that Roost for longevity is super useful as a bulkier flying type Pokemon with still a strong special attack. I think it's very valuable for the team. I was looking also at Thunderous Therian for this slot, but um, because our, I think the regular Thunders got taken, but Zapdos I think was just way better as an option just for that um, reliability in terms of switching into things with it and still doing a, a good amount of damage overall. Now for my fourth pick, I had to wait for another 14 Mons to get taken before it came back to me once again, and a lot of great ones were gone. However, there's a Mon in particular that I was really looking forward to picking up, and it was still there by the time it uh, got back to me. And so this was a Pokemon that I was actually looking to get in the last draft league that I was in, I was uh, trying to get this Mon, but I couldn't, so I got Hatterene instead, which was an invaluable member to that team, and actually could have been great here too, for this team as well, but since I already used it, I wanted to try new things. Of course, you know me, I'm always experimenting with different draft builds and trying out different styles of play and um, things like that, and I was looking for a Mon that was super versatile, that also provided some great support for the team. I decided to pick up Screamtail. And Screamtail, I think, is a really fascinating Pokemon with how fast it is. This Mon is actually faster than the base 100s like Zapdos and stuff. I mean, Ursaluna is super slow, Meowskarada is super fast, Zapdos kind of in between, and then Screamtail is faster. So I like this Mon for the support that it has. It can wish. It can dry Baton Pass. Of course, the Baton Pass rules being that you can't Baton Pass stats or subs or anything like that, but you can Baton Pass just normally for momentum and also with Wish. So that I think could be pretty useful to bring in like Ursaluna and stuff like that and heal it up as well. And just this Mon having the ability to go for things like Encore and Parish Song to deter setup is very cool uh, to see this Mon do because um, it will help us out not to get swept by certain Mons and for the opponent not to go too crazy with many different kinds of sweepers. And the natural speed that this thing has helps it out a lot. This Pokemon also has insane coverage. If you think about it, this is like Mew-esque coverage. Like this Mon can run so many different things. It is relatively weak though, I must say. It's not strong at all. But with how fast it is and its access to bulk up and combine and stuff like that, you can actually set up relatively quickly in a short amount of time. 
and get this thing going. So I am pretty interested to try some of those sets out at some point during the season if it is uh, going to be a good for a good fit for the matchup. But um, yeah, I mean, this thing, it has access to stuff like Thunder Wave, Stealth Rocks as well. It's a good Stealth Rocker. I mean, it can do that. It has Trick Room too. So maybe we have to bring some Trick Room at some point in time. This Mon can do it pretty well because of how bulky it is. And then it can slow Baton Pass out. So that could be uh, quite nice under Trick Room. And um, yeah, just overall, like the physical special uh, coverage moves that it has paired with its physical and special setup moves like Bulk Up and Combine is just, um, I think, really... Uh, in intriguing to me so we'll see how it goes with uh, this mon in particular and um, yeah good typing for the team I should say and um, yeah so the next Pokemon pick number five was uh, I was trying to focus more on getting mons now for hazard removal since you know Zapdos does not have defog anymore and uh, hazards setting up is gonna be kind of annoying unless we run boots I don't think it's that big of a deal if we just run boots on everything but still want to have the option to remove hazards and at this point in time a lot of the best hazard removers were gone like defoggers there's not really a lot of great ones if you think about it there's not really a lot of great mons that you could pick up there's corvinite which got taken pretty early um i think a lot of the spinners are what people look at more because of there being a lot of great ones like great tusk iron treads um things like that so this pick i saw one spinner in particular that i felt wasn't like a budget trash option. I thought it was actually a really great Pokemon overall, even in Draft League especially. Um, I went with Quackoval. So this one here is uh, is going to be fun for Rapid Spin as well. And the fact that it can have Moxie paired with Aqua Step and stuff like that makes it an incredibly dangerous Mon that can snowball without a second's notice. Um, this Mon can get a knockout potentially, and then all of a sudden get an attack boost, a speed boost, and then what? Like, it's sure, it's a spinner, but... It can also just bulk up Sora's Dance, it can be offensive, it can do a lot of great things like that. And the typing coverage is, is pretty cool overall too. Like Screamtail of course can sponge a lot of the weaknesses our team had uh, initially, but Quackoval also has that ice resistance which is quite nice since we didn't really have a great strong ice type switch in. I think Quackoval can um, check a lot of these mods, especially with its fighting type. And um, yeah, I just see a lot of great options in terms of its offensive move pool that it has. It could cover a lot of things with um, you know the, the combination of the water fighting coverage, also potential ice spinner, flying type attacks like Brave Bird and things like that, and U-turn for, uh, for more momentum, which I think is really cool because, you know, Screamtail can baton pass, Masquerade Zapdos can volt turn, Quackoval can U-turn as well. So adding on to this uh, momentum core going on uh, is uh, something that I'm finding to be, uh, as I was drafting, doing the drafting process, I was like, I'm gonna do volt turn, but I'm like, oh, I'm getting a lot of great Pokemon that like more than I expected for this purpose, for the draft's purpose. And um, yeah, this is a really great spinner. And it does seem to have Baton Pass, but I don't think I'll be using Baton Pass because this one is going to be getting speed boosts all over. And I won't be able to pass those to another Pokemon, unfortunately. Imagine if they allowed Baton Pass and I could Baton Pass speed into Ursaluna, Aqua Step, Aqua Step, and then Baton Pass into Ursaluna. That would be incredibly broken. But thankfully, draft leagues are smarter than to allow something like that. So yeah, anyways. Moving on to the number 6th pick right now in the Draft League, and yeah, a lot of great mons are just gone at this point in time. But I definitely wanted a Steel type for the team, since uh, a lot of the great ones were gone, but one stood out in particular to me as something that could really be good for this team overall to provide not only more hazards, but also an additional form of hazard control, and also another form of momentum. I decided to pick up Fortress and Fortress does have access to Volt Switch, which can be really nice for being able to bring in another Mon safely and just generate more momentum overall. Um, I do like this Mon in terms of it having sturdy, so I can always guarantee live a hit. Its offensive move pool is actually not bad at all. I mean, it has access to stuff like remember the OU live that I did with Pin Missile? I could do the Loaded Dice Pin Missile, I could do Gyro Ball, Curse Sets, has Earthquake, it has Rock Tomb, my favorite move of all time. And uh, other moves like, you know, just hazards, spikes, uh, toxic spikes, stealth rocks, things like that. And um, yeah, I feel like it's a great mod in terms of uh, what it can do. It has body press as well, right? Iron Defense body press was probably the first thing I should have mentioned. This thing can do that. Um, yeah, just a good steel type. I think it's better than the steel type that I chose last time uh, for the last draft league, Rev of Room, which I traded away from Magnezone. I had to do a bunch of like swaps and stuff, but 
yeah, starting out, I think, with a steel type like this, which, you know, it's not one of the best steel types, not one of the better ones either, but I think it's it's not a bad one at all. By any means, it's not a bad steel type. It's a, I think it's a relatively solid one for what was available at this point in time. In his sixth pick, so many picks have been gone, and a lot of the steel types, like Corvette and stuff I was thinking about before, you know, Zapdos and things like that, which was um, taken, was gone, so I, yeah, I just took Fortress, which I thought would be a good steel type overall, and uh, yeah, let's move on to pick number seven. So, yeah, not much to say about Fortress other than, you know, it's just a good solid spinner, Hazard Mon, Steel type, and uh, just provides good momentum and support for the team. And you already know, had to complete the Fairy Dragon Steel Core. One of my favorites to do in draft is this core because of, uh, you know, if you, usually like fairies, steels, and dragons are some of the best typings in the game, I would say. And, and they just have like great uh, options for what they can do. Now, I got a budget dragon. And I say budget dragon because this mod was only listed at 9 points, which I could have made into a Terra Captain, but I chose not to just because I had other plans in mind. But this mod feels like anything but budget, I'll tell you that. Like, I looked at this mod and I was like, okay, 9 points, I'll, t I'll take this mod, this, this mod looks cool. And this mod, in fact, is Gudra. And I think Gudra is uh, a really great option for the team because, as you can see, I have a lot of great physically defensive mods in Fortress or Saluna. Zapdos, which has mixed defenses, but typically runs it better with Fizdef, and um, Screamtail, which has good mixed defenses as well. I guess Quackoval, if you're running defensively, could be um, better on the Fizdef side. But Gudra is a wonderful, specially defensive sponge, base 150 special defense, so it can actually eat up Ice Beams pretty easily, and also has a great offensive move pool in both the physical and special attacking side. Um, like base 100 and 110 special, uh, physical attack and special attack, I think are really cool. Great coverage to go with it as well. In this slot, I was also tempted to go, uh, Dragalgy, but Dragalgy has low speed and also only focuses primarily on the special attacking side. So, it is a grounded poison, but I'll get that later. I wanted Gudra because of also its middling speed here, I think is a great option to have because it cannot run a bunch of stuff in that base 80 range of speed. And um, yeah, it doesn't really lock me into having a, like a slow team or anything like that. Like I have a lot of fast options on this team, which I definitely wanted more of because I think my last draft that I picked up was kind of on the slower side. I wanted more faster things for this one in particular. And yeah, Gudra, just a really bulky mon overall. Unfortunately, it doesn't have access to like Dragon Dance and stuff like that, but it does get Acid Armor if you want to boost the defense, so we can make this thing extremely bulky and annoying. Has three abilities, Sap Zipper, Hydration, and Gooey. I think Sap Zipper is super useful to be immune to Spore, give yourself an attack boost, or Leech Seed, or just Grass-type attacks in general. Um, but there's a lot of other cool things we could do, like, I'm seeing, like, potential Rain options. We could run Rain Dance and stuff on certain times, like with Zapdos, Quackovol, and uh, Gudra for Hydration. Could be interesting, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Overall, I think this Mon has uh, decent support options, but great coverage uh, overall as well. Now, the next Pokemon that I picked up is going to be a Pokemon that I wanted that was a Grounded Poison. I think every draft needs one of those for Toxic Spikes because you often will be switching and if there are T-Spikes that are up and you don't have a Poison type Pokemon, you'll be getting poisoned. It's gonna be super annoying. It's just trust me, it's super, super annoying. Every team needs a Grounded Poison for a draft league. And so I wanted to pick up one that wasn't too expensive, but also one that could provide some good offensive pressure as well. And I looked at a Pokemon in particular that I have drafted before a really long time ago for like a, a one of the uh, other draft leagues that I did, like maybe five plus years ago or something. Um, I picked up Salazzle, and Salazzle I think is a really good mod in terms of being able to poison literally anything. Corrosion ability allows you to uh, toxic even like poisons and steel types and stuff like that too. So this could be great because if you think about it, we have Screamtail with Wish Protect and stuff like that which if you're toxicing mons with Salazzle, and you can toxic any mon perhaps, other than magic bounce users and stuff like that, you or, or Pokemon that just can't get status, period, like uh, comatose mons or whatever, I don't know. Um, you can basically just annoy your opponent with wish, protect, toxic, and healing up Salazzle and sub protect and all that kind of stuff. So another way to potentially cheese your opponent is this mon right here. I do like how this Pokemon has a great speed and special attack stat as well. You can nasty plot, you can do all kinds of offensive stuff with it by running specs or just heavy duty boots and stuff like that too. It has knockoff so it can remove items, has taunt, 
Thunder Wave, Toxic, good utility options. Also comes with Toxic Spikes as well as um, Will-O-Wisp and things like that too. So very annoying Mon, I would say. This Salas has always been like one of those just Mons that are annoying. <laughs> really uh, can uh, throw your opponent off guard and just kind of Toxic things down over time. I think it's pretty cool to uh, to have overall. And um, yeah, that's the Poison type I got. Also provides me a Fire type. I didn't have a Fire type for the team, so got some Heat to add to it as well. Other than uh, Corrosion, I guess it gets Oblivious, which, what does it do? It can't be infatuated or taunted. You mean to intimidate? Not really that useful. Oh, it does get Dragon Dance though, I guess. With his base 64 attack, could be nice to not get intimidated, but I don't know if I'll be running that. We'll see, maybe, maybe towards the, the end weeks, we'll see what happens. Um, but now moving on to the next Pokemon for pick number, I think we're on nine, pick number nine now. That was pick number eight, I believe. So pick number nine. I got my uh, my Terra Captain, my first uh, out of two Terra Captains I got, and I saw this Pokemon was still available, and it was on my mind and in my plan from the very beginning to get this Pokemon, because it's the mascot of the channel right now. Hoopa, regular Hoopa, and it does have that Terra option. I think it was like only, I think uh, seven points, I believe, and yeah, I think Hoopa Unbound, which cannot Terra due to it being in the higher tiers, and regular Hoopa being able to Terra from the lower tiers, kind of makes this Pokemon really good, I would say. It's not really that fast, but you can definitely um, run Trick Room on this Mon to kind of make yourself faster than everything else, or, I mean, this Pokemon just has naturally good Spidef Bulk. You can even make it Fizdef Bulky if you wanted to, and, and run setup moves like Calm Mind or Nasty Plot or something like that, but it has a really great... Um, physical move pool and special move pool. Special attack is base 150. That is pretty insane to run with like hyperspace hole or something like that for uh, for breaking through protection just in general, like signature move and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, this is the mascot. Like I had to draft this, right? I decided to um, Terra this Mon. So the way that the Terra works now that we're on the Terra Captain is you can pick three types. One of them has to be your regular stab from one of your regular stabs, and two of them can be two typings that you're not a part of. You can do that, or you can have two typings of your stabs and one that's not a part of it. Um, but I, of course, opted for Terra Ghost as a part of it, because I think Ghost typing is incredibly good uh, to um, to Terra Trasalize into. I think Ghost is, is really, really good. And then I made it Terra Dark and Terra Fairy as the other two typings. Reason being that Terra Dark kind of makes it, uh, gives it a good dark typing uh, sponge as well, like to Sucker Punch, Knock Off, and um, Shadow Balls and stuff like that too, which is pretty useful. It also gives it Stab, Knock Off, and Dark Pulse, so kind of a tribute to Hoopa Unbound as well, so I, I do like that. And then Terra Fairy, I think, is a really good typing option for this Pokemon because also it, it does remove its dark type uh, weakness. It turns into a resistance and... Um, yeah, like, it can work really well offensively by, you know, this is a really great special wall breaker. You now have Terra Blast Fairy option as well, and um, also just defensively, uh, good resistances and immunity to dragons, so could be kind of cool. I mean, Fairy is just a good typing offensively and somewhat defensively as well for a Pokemon like this, and um, I'm excited. I'm super excited for this mod in particular because it is the mascot, and it lasted this long in the draft as well. At only 7 points, it can Terra, so... Um, I'm glad that I got it for uh, for what it can do. Also has magician options too, like it can steal some items here and there. Really tricky mon. Yeah, stay tuned for that. Now, on the next pick, which is pick number 10, I decided to uh, pick up my second and final Terra Captain for the team. As you know, Hoopa was 7 points. This mon was 8 points, and I saw it and I was like, wait, if this mon can Terra, that could be, uh, that could be it. That could be over for our opponent. Like this mon is kind of crazy with Terra. And I decided to pick up Terra the Dunsparce. Now, with its only one typing, you have to always run a normal translation and then two other types that you want. I went normal plus flying in water. Flying is cool because it turns you into a uh, Pokemon that can actually fly. The Dunsparce always wanted to fly, right? Or Dunsparce always wanted to fly. Now it can with flying translation. And um, yeah, good stab air slash for Serene Grace. Potential glare plus that could be cool as well as uh, giving yourself a fighting resistance and ground immunity once again, I think is is really good for the team. 
Overall, and then the water typing I felt was just the best defensively, kind of like Calm Mind Hatterade when it transforms into water typing, translation, kind of like that, but like the Dunsparce can do it really well too with either Calm Mind or Coil. Um, the normal Terra is so cool for its stab, either Boom Burst or like normal Terra Boom Burst sounds broken, as well as uh, I guess like Body Slam and stuff like that too. It's just really powerful overall um, with translation and a lot of great. Versatility. Versatility is so good on this mod. Options for Stealth Rocks as well. Gives ourselves another Stealth Rocker potentially. Um, also, like, just coverage-wise, it's amazing. 100% Para with Glare. And, uh, yeah, Serene Grace is, is cool for a Terra mod. But, yeah, definitely I have the option to change any Terra types I want using, a, like, a transaction if I need to. If some of the Terra types don't work. But I feel like these could be really cool. The typings on Hoopa and Dead Sparse kind of uh, cover stuff pretty well. And um, yeah, I, I like I don't want to talk too much about the Dunsparce because I feel like there's so many cool sets that I want to try to bring that I don't want to give too much light to. But um, yeah, I should mention this other ability, Rattled, which I think has a lot of value in certain matchups as well because its speed is raised when you get hit by a bug, dark, or intimidated. Probably even a ghost type attack if we terrestrialize and allow ourselves to be hit by that, we get a speed boost. So that could be really cool. And, I mean, you do see a lot of U-Turners and t Intimidators and stuff like that in the game. So, yeah, I'm excited to uh, showcase this mon, which, I mean, with Terra, I think it's going to be so much fun. Like, the Dunsparce, ah, oh, this is going to be crazy. This is absolutely going to be a crazy uh, draft overall to try to pilot. Um, with so much versatility and so many options for what we can do, we just have to uh, kind of bring the best six each time. And our opponents will be probably not be able to expect exactly what our sets are going to be for a lot of these different types of mods that can run so many different types of sets. And so at this point in the draft, I only have like three points left. So I could have either picked up one Pokemon that's worth three points, or I could pick up two Pokemon that's worth um, two points and one point respectively, so that I would end up with 12 mods instead of 11. I decided to uh, end up with more mods in the end. So for two points, from, or from the two point tier, I picked up Ice Q as my 11th pick in the draft. And I think Ice Q is really cool. Shout out to Emil for kind of showing me about Ice Q in draft, freezing my mons as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Ice Q is a cool mon because it has the Ice Face ability, which allows you to guarantee take a physical hit. And then your Ice Face gets broken, but you can bring it back. If you go for Snow Escape, you can bring it back. Or if you, um, if it snows already up and you switch out and switch back in, you get your Ice Face back too. And this mon is really bulky in its Ice Face form. But of course, when it's Ice Face pops, all of a sudden now you have a really fast Pokemon in uh, Ice Q with its Ice Face broken. The Ice Face, the no Ice Face uh, Ice Q variant. So um, yeah, this mod is really cool because it can run things like Freeze Dry and more utility options. But then it can also Belly Drum and run offensive options. So there's a lot of really interesting things that this mod can do. And it should not be overlooked. This mod is still dangerous for what it can do. And it can be really annoying too because of uh, its ability. I think its ability just makes it so annoying sometimes. I remember when I was trying to prep for it in the BBR and stuff like that, it was it was like a mon that I could not uh, overlook just because of uh, how how it could like, change the weathers up for versus like weather teams pretty easily too. And um, yeah, also just freeze things. <laughs> it can just freeze things too. Um, but yeah, Ice Q is the Pokemon that I got for the 11th pick. And then for the 12th pick, I had to pick from the one point tier, which was kind of tragic because the one point Pokemon all looked so bad, except for one Pokemon that I thought actually could have some value and it could maybe be decent. I could see myself bringing it perhaps um, for a one point Mon, the last pick of this draft. I picked up Grumpig and like Grumpig actually has decent stats. Good, like, speed tier, middling speed tier at base 80. Decent stats as well. Um, has a, a solid special attack stat that it can use with either Calm Mind or Nasty Plot. Has the option to Trick Room as well. And abilities in Thick Fat and Gluttony, I think, are the most useful ones. Own Tempo is not the best ability for this mod, but Thick Fat's cool. You can sponge Ice and Fire type hits, which uh, I think the team was a little bit... Had a little bit of an Ice uh, issue at the beginning because we had Ursaluna, Meowskarada, Zapdos... Gudra and stuff like that, but I mean, the ice weakness I think is pretty well rounded off when we have Screamtail, I can take any hit pretty much. Um, Quackovol, Fortress, uh, and 
as well as now Ice Q and Thick Fat, uh, Thick Fat on Grumpig. I guess the, the Dunsparce can probably take hits, but Grumpig now is a literal ice resistance for the team as well. And um, yeah, I think this this mod has pretty great coverage for only one points. Like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> has Taunt, Thunder Wave, uh, stuff like that. You could Trick. Ooh, oh, it has Mirror Coat. That's crazy. Does it have Counter? Uh, no, unfortunately. But yeah, either way, I think this mod is really cool as a one point mod. And a way to round this draft off by getting every single Pokemon for the team that has some kind of value that other mods on the team don't have. That's going to be my draft for this season of the PPL. I'm excited to uh, to try things out, of course. I'm sure there's going to uh, be some adjustment that we have to make, kind of getting used to the team and things like that, as always. But I love these, uh, these 12 Pokemon that I picked up. For this season i think it's really cool let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as well if you haven't already wished me a happy birthday do that but let me also know um you know what, what you think of this draft overall and uh what is your favorite pokemon that i picked up i would most love to know that as well so with that being said thank you everybody for watching hope you all enjoyed my draft breakdown seeing all the mons next sunday will be week one of this draft league and yeah hopefully we can put in some work with uh some of these fine team members that we have here I'll see you all on the next one in peace.